A very good evening uh, to all participants in today's live session. We are going to take your questions one by one and also we are going to show you a few things which might be of interest to you. So I noticed that uh, there is a question from Chaitanya Bansal. I know Chaitanya is a very young participant of our course. Uh, Chaitanya, you have asked that will the examination be held in the multiple choice question format or written format. So the answer is that yes, it is going to be only in the multiple choice question format. But some questions might have only one correct answer. We call them as uh, MCQs. And there will be also some questions where more than one answer may be correct. They are going to be referred to as MSQs. So be careful when you look at the question, don't assume that every question has only one answer. You will be awarded the full marks when you tick all the correct choices. Okay. Prasad and Akriti have joined. Good evening to both of you and also any other participants who are there across the screen. Please confirm that uh, you are able to see the opening screen of my presentation. And please type your questions so that uh, they can be taken up one by one. So far only Akriti and Prasad have said good evening. I am going to now show you the presentation. So Chaitanya, I have already answered your question Then the exam will be in the multiple choice format but more than one answer may be right in some questions. So moving ahead, today's agenda is essentially to talk to you about crossword. So in our examination, we are going to also include a crossword just for making it a little bit exciting as well as interesting. So I will show you what is meant by a crossword and how it will be there in the examination. Uh, there is a very interesting competition coming up called as the regatta competition or to be precise it is called as the international indoor regatta competition, indoor airship regatta competition. We will talk about that and then we will take some comments or feedback regarding how the course is running. So friends, this is called as a crossword and in the crossword as you can notice, certain letters are common to two entries. For example, in media, the A is common to media and apps and in apps and strategies, S is common 
similarly strategies and themes is common etc so when you start filling the crossword you will be given some horizontal clues and some vertical clues and uh, you are supposed to start entering these clues the more clues you enter the more hints you will get so that you can even guess the other clues or the other answers so here are some tips for solving the crossword some instructions number 1 it will be easy so we have requested nptel organizers to give you a hard copy of the blank crossword you can use it for your rough work and then after the exam is over you are supposed to return it back to the examination authorities so don't carry the crossword with you it's not allowed but to make it easy for you i have requested them to give you a print out sometimes they may not be able to give a print out because of various operational reasons so don't worry you can even solve it online but of course having a paper in front of you definitely helps and it's a good practice to use capital letters to write the answers because then it becomes easy to see the clues if there is uh, if there is a, a word which has two words okay so for example center of gravity is three words so if there is a clue which has got the answer as center of gravity then you will have one space blank between center and off and one space blank between off and gravity so remember that multiple word answer and it will be mentioned in the crossword so the clue will be something like 6, 6 that means it's three words first one is six letter second one is two letter third one is three letters so be careful about that for each clue after the clue we will put a number in brackets and that is a hint for you that this particular clue is answered by a word which has those many letters for example if the answer of a quiz is buoyancy b u o y a n c y so we will write the question the working principle of lts systems is dash and then we will say bracket 8 which means you know that it's an eight letter word which is the answer for this particular clue and uh, that will help you in solving the crossword okay so i just want to um, go ahead and actually show you something about the regatta now so okay so i'm going to show you a small video about the regatta please have a look
recently developed by the researchers in our laboratory okay so if you have any questions or any queries regarding the regatta please ask your queries in the text box so that we can clarify them so uh, essentially this is going to be a fun event for enthusiastic uh, people there is no age limit anybody can take part in the regatta we are recommending that you form teams of four students come with your airship and we are going to provide you the required amount of helium and uh, and you know <clears throat> you can take part you could come and take part purely for fun and excitement Uh, this regatta is going to be held on two days, 25th and 26th of June. Or you could come to take part in the competition as a competitor. It's up to you. Remember, it is approved by the International Aero Modeling Federation. Therefore, any record created in this event is going to be considered as a world record, and you will get a certificate for that from the International Aero Modeling Federation. And since it's the first time in India. anything that uh, is done in this competition automatically qualifies for the uh, national record so the the problem statement is going to involve flying the airship across the two poles of the kho kho court indoor kho kho court in a figure of eight fashion three times so you have to do three figure of eights and the fastest time by any team in a figure of 8 flight three times is going to be counted and recorded uh chaitanya wants to know where is the sign up link for this the sign up link on for this is available on the website uh, www.deltas2022.in we are going to type that in the chat window okay so you can have a look at this website right now we are only asking for pre registration just to get an idea about how many people are expected to join what kind of arrangements we can make later on there will be a formal registration for which there will be some charges uh, and um, we request all of you to look for the youtube channel of lta systems lab just search for lta systems laboratory iit bombay on youtube and you should be able to get the link and uh, you know if you do that you will be able to see many videos there and uh, we have also <coughs> we have conducted some workshops recently so we are going to insert uh, those videos there i am just trying to get the uh, link for you i will share the link with you so if you go to our channel you will find the same video which i showed you you will probably find it there uh, but we also have our channel and i am going to just share with you the link of this particular uh, channel so that you can go to that site and watch all the videos so i have shared the link with you the youtube link and while you go to our channel to look at the videos uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that all the videos which are uploaded you get a notification and you don't miss them at all akriti wants to know whether the regatta airship has to be rigid or non rigid so akriti i think uh, you would appreciate that 
if you come with a rigid airship it will be very difficult for you to bring it to iit bombay from where you are uh, and therefore i would recommend that you make a non rigid airship which you can probably easily pack up and bring it uh, i think people who live in the campus or very near the campus only they can afford to think to make a rigid airship because how do you transport a rigid airship it's very difficult okay however if somebody wants to build uh, bring a rigid airship we are not going to uh, restrict we are not mentioning anything regarding the special configuration we are only going to put some constraint on the volume of the airship because we are supposed to provide you the required amount of helium so check the website it is going to be either 1.5 or maybe 2 cubic meters maximum volume of the envelope also we are going to uh, conduct a workshop on 26 27 28 i am happy to share with you that uh, there has been a worldwide response to this workshop and we have more than 1240 registrations for the workshop which is frankly far more than what we expected so what we are going to do is we are also going to webcast that workshop live on youtube the channel for that or the link for that will be shared with you with the teaching assistants so even if you could not register for the workshop because we have exceeded our registration you are welcome to watch the videos of the workshop live on youtube and uh, subsequently somewhere in the month of may or june when uh, iit bombay allows outsiders to come and stay in the hostels we do plan to conduct another workshop where we will practically allow you to make your own airship take it back with you and then it can be configured for the competition in the last week of june remember friends the regatta is going to be on 25th and 26th of june in iit bombay in the kho kho indoor stadium located in the jimkhana ground near jimkhana ground of iit bombay okay any other question anybody would like to ask regarding our course or regarding lts systems please feel free and even if you have questions regarding this conference or regarding the regatta we will be happy to tackle them so friends we are waiting for your questions because if you don't ask questions then i'm going to just close this session and go away from here but i would uh, urge you to ask your questions in the live chat so jatanya bansal wants to know whether a team of four is required no four is the maximum number it could also be two people or a single person but um, unfortunately if you come alone you can take part but there is a limit to the number of teams number of people whom we can handle and also is going to be very expensive for you because we are going to charge some amount for participation prasad has asked a very nice question can you please tell me any software helpful in designing lts systems so to to answer your question we are actually going to conduct a pre conference workshop on 22nd of january uh, 22nd of june sorry uh, in which one software company called as metacom technologies is actually going to is actually going to uh, demonstrate use of their software for the analysis of lts systems they will not be able to show you how to design an lts systems but they are going to give you uh, a software which they were going to give you a training or exposure to a software 
So there are software tools. There is one called as CFD++ that can be used for the CFD analysis. And they are going to demonstrate live examples. But the question that you have probably is regarding designing an LTA system. No, there is no software available. But when we do the workshop, we have made a, you know, we have made a spreadsheet. And you can also make your own spreadsheet by simply coding all, all the formulae that you see in the, in the presentations. So we conduct a full-fledged tutorial. And in the tutorial, all steps are uh, clarified. But if you get stuck at some place, our, you know, our lab is very happy to help out. We are here to encourage students to learn and design LTA systems. And that is why we are offering this course also. So use the, don't say, please give me a software. Now that is not what we can help you with. If you are stuck at some place, we will be able to help you. We have also made some codes and uh, you know they are available. Maybe the authors of those codes might be able to share with you. I don't know because I am not the author of those codes. But do approach us. I can tell you that there is one code available by uh, a, a German student called as M. A. Richter. He did his master's project on design of an airship and he has made his code available online free of cost. It's a MATLAB program if I'm not wrong. So if you have any queries, you can send an email to us and we will be happy to put you in touch with that guy. Okay, so we always like to hear from you. There is a discussion forum on the for the NPTEL LTA course. You write your queries there. There are two teaching assistants helping me in this course. They are highly enthusiastic people. One of them is sitting next to me right now and they will be happy to help you out with those details. Vignesh Srinivasan has a question about any pre-screening for submission of conference paper on airship. So Vignesh, the deadline for submitting the papers is already over and we have already received some 38 papers etc. And these, uh, out of these papers, now by the end of this month, 31st March is the deadline for getting the final full length paper submit, uh, which have been already approved. So the extended abstracts have already been communicated to us and we have selected a few of them and encouraged the participants to send full length papers. Uh, some of them might be permitted as a oral presentation and some of them might be presented as a poster presentation. And uh, uh, you know, once the conference is over, the, the good quality papers Springer, see, we have, we have entered an agreement with Springer that they will bring out a special issue on some of the good quality papers published, uh, presented in this conference. So, not every paper will be eligible because Springer has their own very strict guidelines in accepting a paper. So, if you present a paper in the conference and if it is found to be useful and of a good quality, then Springer will automatically approach you and they will ask you to work further on that particular paper and then bring it to the level of their journal and then they will be happy to publish it in the proceedings. So my experience is that it takes about 8-9 months after the conference is over for the proceedings to come out because I have presented papers in other conferences and then I have been approached by Springer and we have submitted and also recently there was, a con there was a conference in Australia in which we presented a paper and that happened in December last year and now we have received the email from them saying that uh, they are happy to you know, uh, accept a version of that paper in the journal. So it's not default, uh, Vignesh, it's not a default publication in Springer. Springer has its own quality standards. But we are giving you a platform to do good quality work and include your paper in the proceedings of Springer. So right now we are going to bring out a soft copy proceedings of all the papers presented and all the posters presented, but that will just be a soft copy. No, it will not have any ISBN number. It will not probably not have any other reference. That will be there, that is going to be considered as a soft copy uh, conference proceedings. But then subsequently, as I mentioned, certain papers can be shortlisted for publication in the Springer special issue.
If you see the website of Delta's conference, you will find a dedicated email address, deltas2022 at the rate arrow.iitb.ac.in. You can send all your queries there. Any queries regarding this should be sent. Okay. Vignesh has uh, sent a matter of uh, let, uh, a small thanks. He says, thanks for explaining about the airship material in the course. Detailed information about UV paints and atmospheric production layers is needed. Vignesh, this information is not easily available. It is a matter of research and uh, there are several proprietary concerns also. So, for example, uh, one of the most popular material which is used for airship envelopes is a laminate of Tedlar and Mylar which is uh, uh, patented and uh, proprietary to a company called DuPont and they are not going to release those details because it's of commercial interest to them. Similarly, there are researchers working in the area of developing new technology in LTA envelope materials. For example, uh, there is a department of textile technology in IIT Delhi and uh, Professor Mangala Joshi, Mangala Joshi who works in that institute is an expert in airship envelope material. Uh, I know that in her laboratory they are developing special material for LTA systems, lightweight, less permeable, strong. You are welcome to approach her for help in this matter and maybe, who knows, you might actually receive a sample of a small a patch for your own research work or for your own fabrication work. But uh, we are not uh, doing research in envelope material in our lab right now. We are more into design and fabrication and flying and testing. So we use ready-made material which is commercially available in the market. And believe me, material for indoor airships is very easily available. Uh, you can simply use what is called as metallized polymer or metallized nylon, MPET, and you can even buy it online, it's not uh, unaffordable. There are several websites which give you metallized nylon of various thicknesses and hence various uh, GSMs or grams per square meter starting from 25 to 35 to 60 to 90. My recommendation is that don't use material below 65 GSM because we have found that such material tends to be very, very flimsy. So all your effort in making the envelope can go waste in a matter of few hours if you use weak material. So go for a reasonably strong material. My recommendation is 65 GSM or above. Obviously, the larger the GSM you use, heavier will be the envelope. So the size of the airship will become larger. But one has to balance size and weight with robustness. And being very greedy and making a very uh, lightweight, thin envelope in the hands of a novice like you, you might end up spoiling it or puncturing it very soon and then the whole effort goes down the drain. So the floor is open for any further questions. Vignesh wants to know whether the workshop consists of end-to-end -end fabrication of the airship. Which workshop are you talking about? Because there are many workshops. So we would like you to clarify which workshop is the question.
If you are referring to the workshop on 26, 27, 28 of March, remember it's a pure online workshop. So we can only give you some information and some procedures. We cannot make it, we cannot fabricate anything. But as I mentioned, subsequently in the summer when the situation opens up and the institute allows outsiders to come and stay in the hostels during our summer vacation, we do plan to conduct a workshop where you can come and actually fabricate the airship and take it with you. This workshop is going to be only informative in nature and with some guidelines and suggestion. So the workshop in the month of March 26, 27, 28 is going to be purely online workshop about 3 hours a day, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. India time. We will take you through the entire procedure from start to end for an indoor airship fabrication. We will answer all your doubts and queries. But obviously, because it is online, you will, name, you will not be able to uh, make anything yourself. Prasad has a question. Can you please tell me how the components are joined to airship? So, components are never joined to the airship. They are mounted on the airship. I assume that you are talking about airship envelope. So, if you are asking about the envelope itself, Envelope itself, uh, envelope itself is normally uh, joined by heat sealing or by adhesive uh, methods or by what is called as RF sealing depending on the material nature. When you talk about components on the airship, they are generally mounted and that is something that we are going to talk about in the workshop in detail. Chaitanya Bansal uh, wants to know during the workshop from 27 to 25, Will we get any accommodation? So first of all, Chaitanya, the workshop is only on 22nd. That's a pre-conference workshop. The conference is 23rd and 24th. 25, 26 is the regatta. And yes, during that time, we are going to we are going to try to get accommodation booked in the hostels of IIT Bombay for the students coming from outside like you. And we are going to get a concessional rate, very very much affordable rate for the student accommodation. But all that is subject to the institute norms and the availability of accommodation during that period. So we are trying our best. We are trying to request the institute to allot some rooms to us for the workshop. Vignesh wants to know about any special adhesive for joining the petals. So Vignesh, uh, there is no single adhesive which can be used to join the petals. There are different types of adhesives available. Uh, there is one problem with the adhesives though we have seen that sometimes the rubber based adhesives can make the airship very heavy. So there are some very lightweight synthetic adhesives available today. You will have to search and you will have to try them out. There are some online forums available where you can uh, consult some uh, people who are experts. There is one called as SASA, SASA, small airship, you know, uh, I forgot the full name, but SASA. So you search on Facebook, you will find a small airship uh, group. So there, there are many people who are ready to give you specific answers. But you know, most of these people are based abroad in Germany, in UK, in Canada, in USA. So they get lots of adhesives and chemicals there quite easily. So in the Indian market, we need to struggle to search and the only thing I can suggest is experiment, experiment, experiment and try. We are not a big supporter of adhesives. We normally join our petals by either heat sealing or by what is called as radio frequency sealing. And recently we have procured one machine for impulse sealing. So there are two rollers, those get heated and you can then quickly pass the material between the two rollers at a slow speed and it will heat and join the material. But it all depends upon what material you are using. For you, I would recommend simply you can use heat sealing using a standard electric iron, portable electric iron that is available at all homes. 
I think that is sufficient for you. And recently, I conducted a hands-on workshop in an institute uh, where my associate also accompanied me. The teaching assistant of the course also accompanied me, and we gave a small demo also there on how to join the material suitable for airships. So as I said, we are planning to conduct a similar workshop in the summer vacation so that you can get an idea about how to go about joining the envelope. So keep your questions going, otherwise we will have uh, we will have to stop the session. Akriti has a question about is a single electric motor enough to control all six direction of airships? No, Akriti, that's a very tall order. Uh, if you want to control all six directions using only one motor, you will have to make it completely available in all directions. That particular scheme is going to be so complicated and so heavy that you might not get any advantage. Instead. What you should, what I would recommend is, by experience, is we use three motors for indoor airships, which are not going to fly very fast, and where you have space constraints, so you have to turn very quickly, uh, literally turn on its own head. We recommend that there will be one motor on the back, called as a yaw motor, mounted on the fin, which can give direct side force. There will be one motor to give forward thrust, and there will be one motor pointing downwards so that it gives you upward thrust that allows you to overcome any issue with buoyancy. So in case you find that because of putting some extra material or because of putting some payload you don't have enough buoyancy then you can use the vertical motor to give vertical thrust and overcome gravity to some extent. So I recommend usage of three motors forward, upward and sideward and that we have found to be sufficient. So we have published several papers in this area which we have which are available in public domain and if you have difficulty you can send email to us and we will be happy to help you. So we have just about 19 minutes remaining before the session ends. Keep your questions coming friends. Yeah. Any safety process in handling hydrogen Vignesh Srinivasan wants to know. Also, any pre-approval in buying cylinders? That's a very good question. There are a lot of safety precautions in handling hydrogen and we are going to conduct one session specially on how to handle hydrogen safely in our three-day workshop on 26 to 28th of March. There is no pre-approval for, bu for buying the cylinders but uh, it's not easy to get them straight away. You have to talk to the vendors and maybe some deposit has to be given 
plus you will require some kind of a control valve so that <coughs> you can slowly fill in the envelope all these things are going to be available they are available on rent of course uh, prasad wants to know how to do life cycle assessment of an airship well for that you will have to come to my laboratory and work with me as a as a as a intern or as a research engineer this is a very interesting topic and at the moment we do not have any study on the life cycle assessment of airships but it is an open topic for research so i don't have any answer for this question uh, i know that certain methods can be used we have done little bit of this work many many years ago when we started working on airships but it's a open research topic and it will be nice if someone can devote some time and effort to that topic so i notice that only about 3 or 4 people are asking questions vignesh prasad akriti and chaitanya i think these are the only four people who are asking questions but there are six times minimum more people in the meeting who are on the views so it's better if other people also can ask questions which are coming in their mind any questions regarding the course work i know there are a couple of questions which are unanswered in the discussion forum i was not able to get time to answer them i'll do that sometime when i'm little bit free what valve would you recommend to install in an airship for filling the hydrogen vignesh please join our workshop we will be explaining this in detail in the workshop ready made valve are not available we have to make our own valve to suit our requirement looks like we don't have any more questions so unless i get something in the chat window in the next 1 minute Vignesh wants to know any recommended software for controlling motors. Generally, the controller is Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Yes, these are the most common. Uh, these are the most common operating uh, systems which are used for controlling. Um, also, you will have to mount electronic speed controller or ESC along with each of the motors to control the amount of current that can go. So yes, Raspberry Pi and Arduino are very commonly used. Raspberry Pi is actually quite light. We have we have some experience with using Raspberry Pi, but there are also other controllers which are available. So Dhawal Shivastava has a very very good question. How feasible is the integration of gondola inside an airship? Means no external gondola, and still there will be some load carrying capacity in the airship. Dhawal, it is very much possible. Uh, only thing is you have to be sure that you do not puncture the envelope so if you can make the bottom of the envelope in such a manner that it can accommodate the gondola inside the structure uh, it is possible however such a thing is not possible for a non rigid airship because by natural gravity the weight of the gondola will pull it out and downwards so this thing is possible if you have some semi rigid structure 
or some member in the bottom at least which will prevent the gondola from falling out but it can be done it definitely can be done i can think of an envelope which has got a small pocket in the bottom and that pocket goes inwards i can think of a couple of members outside on the envelope mounted to prevent the gondola from falling out and with this the gondola can actually sit on those two or three or criss cross type of uh, bottom uh, structure which is conformal to the bottom of the envelope and thus remain inside the airship so i presume that the purpose of this is to may maybe reduce the drag of the envelope vignesh has another interesting question has 3d printing been implemented anywhere in your recent public fabrications my answer is that 3d printing has been incorporated in every activity of our recent fabrications every activity all our airships all our aerostats that we have built have involved some or the other 3d printing because that is the fastest and the most cost effective method to generate components or parts which are customized to your requirements so the answer is a resounding yes all our airships involve 3d printing we have 3d printers in our laboratory also we have a laser cutting machine we have a 2d router machine we have a 3d printing machine and also some other tools and implements which allow us to fabricate these things very efficiently avinash is suggesting Uh, for adhesive lord chemical dr beck ferricol etc are these not the companies used for lvc yes they are but ferricol cannot stick everything similarly dr beck's chemicals so you need to experiment every material every material has its own properties so whether or not it joins has to be determined by testing the material so simply taking a material an adhesive from the market and trying it out for example you can say okay ferricol which is used to stick mainly wood and plywood i will take it to stick uh, let us say mpet it won't work it will not work ferricol cannot be used to the best of my knowledge for joining mpet but maybe there are some materials which can join with ferricol or with the uh, adhesive that is available called as a instant adhesive but we have also seen that if you use that instant adhesive which is available from ferricol or some other companies the problem is it can create drag a uh, holes in the envelope what channel remote is recommended for increasing the range of the airship for an indoor airship i don't recommend a remote controller i recommend that you can fly it using even your own mobile phone with the uh, creating a communication link between the mobile phone through wifi and a receiver like arduino on the on the uh, airship uh, gondola okay now if you say 10 km range you are talking about outdoor airships now for 10 km range which is beyond line of sight you have to make them autonomous or you have to have a very very robust and strong communication uh, system i don't have any idea because i have not made any airship uh, or i have not worked on any airship which can have a range more than 2 and a half 3 km so without designing discrete petals akriti wants to know is it possible to make envelope of the airship akriti you can do that but it will not look very neat it will not it will not you can make a you can make a pillow kind of a shape by joining only the edges of two petals and technically speaking you can make a large pillow and that pillow can also fly but you know uh it will not look good it will not give you the uh first of all the aesthetic uh, feel as well as it will not give you the aerodynamic uh, smoothness okay so making making uh, an envelope with petals is the best and the most appropriate way to make an envelope <laughs> dawal wants uh, dawal wants to know whether it is necessary to have the envelope of the airship from single material no we can have different material from different airships we have done a theoretical study in this for optimizing and weight reduction of the envelope so what we did is we identified the areas on the airship where the stresses were low and we said we can use thinner and lighter material in those areas okay but we have not made any airship with multiple materials 
because we never felt the need for it it is too complicated for us to go into such complications so we don't normally bother we make it using a single material but yes large air shifts and aerostats one could think of having different thickness material at different locations okay guys 7 minutes remaining before my session time runs out and uh, after that i will not be able to continue because we have a booking here only till 6 o'clock so quickly ask your questions or else we will say goodbye and then we will meet again after a month in our third and final interaction session but of course you know that we have a discussion forum and that forum can be utilized by all students to look at uh, their, uh, to get their doubts cleared uh, avinash says i mean these companies tech reps can advise us i couldn't remember name of helical making company uh, thus use the name 3m is another company yeah always you can definitely talk to see whenever you buy any chemical for any purpose definitely you must talk to the company's tech reps to confirm whether it is suitable or not so no doubt about it last 6 minutes remaining so i have received three likes in this particular session so thank you so much for those who have liked the session we like that you like our session and requesting others to also click the like button if you are happy and interested in uh, associating with us in these matters and if you are happy with the interaction session so let there be more likes please everyone likes to be liked okay so the number is going up now there are four likes thank you so much i hope before we finish in the next 5 minutes or 4 minutes this number of likes will go up dawal again wants to know what can be the most unconventional use of an airship if you have seen any that is not relating to passengers or transport or surveillance the most interesting application of airships which i have seen is in a james bond movie in which an airship is used to throw passengers out if you are an inconvenient passenger there is a shoot where you can be thrown out of the airship so that is the most unconventional or exciting application i have seen and one more application which is very positive and very exciting is for detecting land mines which are buried inside the ground in a post war scenario we all know that there is a war going on between russia and ukraine so when there is a war between two countries normally they put land mines so that the enemy cannot use heavy vehicles and tanks so when the land mines are there they work on pressure and after the war is over nobody bothers to go and remove them so people like you and me are going to yes people like you and me get uh, injured so uh, there was a very interesting application called mine seeker i have also mentioned in my lecture i really like that one uh, vignesh wants to know why can't we have all the dof degrees of freedom arrested instead of using just nose baton see if you arrest all the degrees of freedom you are going to cause a lot of stress on the envelope because envelope is a flexible and a relatively weak material so if you arrest the degree of freedom you are going to stress that instead of that it is better to allow the vehicle or the platform or the airship to swivel to some extent 
so that it transmits the load otherwise it is going to create a lot of stress on the nose which can potentially tear the envelope couple of minutes remaining so the number of likes has more than doubled since i spoke to you last that's very encouraging you have only 2 minutes remaining to show your appreciation by <coughs> liking the video on youtube in larger numbers and i also want to mention to you friends that uh, npetel has restarted this uh, summer internship scheme so students who secure the highest marks in this course maybe one or two of them they will be offered a paid internship uh, under the supervision of the instructor and i am quite uh, happy with the providing internship to students uh, if i remember correctly npetel pays around 6000 rupees a month for uh, rupees 5000 a month for a maximum of i think 3 or 4 months okay uh, generally it is 2 months but it can also be made into 3 months so if you are if you take part in the examination if you get a very high score you will be able to come for doing an internship paid by npetel vignesh wants to know how to do quality inspection on strength of envelope after every run how to make sure it is safe for next flight there is no method like this available normally we just inflate the balloon with air envelope with air and we just check for air leaks and wherever we see any leak we just patch it up but there is no other way to do a quality inspection on the strength of the envelope uh, unfortunately there are simple methods available for checking the leakage like soap bubble technique or like i showed in my slides a reverse elimination technique please check the videos to explain how it is done but there is no other way available to check the strength of the envelope okay so with that i come to the end of today's session there are we have already touched 6 o'clock so we will be stopping the session thank you so much for joining and for liking and i am um, going to now end the stream and i'll see you again next time okay thank you and have a good evening